It's Wednesday, August 22nd, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we find out what all the buzz is about mosquitoes and testing for West Nile virus, and learn more about the Barnstable Senior Center's new evening programs. Let's start with some news you can use. Come join Chief Matthew Sonneman and other members of the Barnstable Police Department at Centerville Pie Company at 1671 Falmouth Road, Route 28, on Friday, August 24th from 7.30 a.m. until 9 a.m. for a cup of coffee with the Chief, some pastries, and conversation. Coffee with the Chief is part of the Barnstable Police Department's initiative to continue building partnerships in the community. They look forward to seeing you Friday morning. With this week's potential for rain and thunderstorms, make sure you are going around your property to empty any standing water that may have accumulated and make sure there are no containers left outside to collect water. Mosquitoes that have the potential to carry West Nile virus like to lay eggs and develop in man-made containers. Gabrielle Sokolsky, Assistant Superintendent and Entomologist, joined us in studio with more information on the detection of West Nile virus in Barnstable and tips to keep you and your family safe. Mosquitoes, yuck. Here's some in a jar, ready to go get tested. With me today, Gabby Sokolsky, Mosquito Control Project. My goodness, West Nile virus, mosquitoes everywhere, water everywhere, what are we gonna do? But first, let's talk about the Mosquito <laughs> Project, Control Project, and what you do here on the Cape. Sure, um, I'm the Assistant Superintendent for the Cape Cod Mosquito Control Project. We're a quasi-state organization. We are actually set up through legislation under the state. We have a local board of commissioners who are residents in this area or who represent the residents of this area. And what we're mandated to do is go out and control mosquito populations. Keep them below a nuisance level, keep them below a level where they're going to be transmitting disease. We okay. were formed um, back in 1930 through legislation, first organized wow. mosquito control in the Commonwealth of Mass. And we're paid for by the 15 towns okay. in Barnesville County. Okay. So what we do is, we do mosquito control a little differently here than they do off Cape. I think a lot of people um, who live in towns off Cape are used to at night trucks going around spraying, right? Late at night or early in the morning, depending on where you live. Trucks would go through your neighborhood and spray something into your neighborhood. We don't do any of that on the Cape. We focus on mosquitoes. That's focusing on adult mosquitoes. Um, we focus on mosquitoes when they're in their developmental stages, like those mosquitoes in that jar. If you can stop them before they're flying, right. that would be the key. Right. So that's what we focus on. Okay. We have 10 crews who work super hard all summer long, no summer vacation for them. Right. Um, they're going around to different areas of Cape Cod, checking standing water that was mapped, that's been mapped over time, and taking samples to look for mosquito larvae. Okay. When they find the mosquito larvae, they're treating that water with a bacteria. Okay. They'll have backpack sprayers on. I think people look at those backpack sprayers and think, oh my gosh, what's in the back of them? It's a bacteria. It's a very targeted approach to mosquito control. Okay. So five towns tested positive for the West Nile virus uh, through the last testing. Um, our town was notified. Barnstable was one of those five towns. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about, so residents, uh, you know, aren't freaking out, but what is no. West Nile virus to the point where... Yeah, the mosquitoes are tested for it. What does that mean to us? So all through this mosquito season, we have traps throughout the Cape where we're collecting samples of mosquitoes, species that, were, that are potentially carrying diseases. Okay. I collect those on a weekly basis. I identify them to species, put them on ice, ship them overnight to the state labs where they do the testing and then notify okay. us. It's about a 48-hour turnaround. I ship okay. on Tuesday by... Thursday afternoon we have results. Um, they like to test them a few times to make sure that their results are accurate before they release the information. Um, West Nile virus, 14 samples on the Cape, five towns in one week is unprecedented. Okay. So lots of rain or? Was, it is. is. It's not lots of rain. It's that we get little bits of rain. So if we kept getting rain constantly, lots of rain, everything would keep flushing out. Like that pickle jar full of mosquito larvae. Mosquitoes sure. develop in standing water. Right. So if you can imagine you have a bucket in your backyard or a tarp, that's mm -hmm. a classic. Tarp okay. over something in your backyard. 
if it keeps raining, that water keeps getting flushed out. What has happened this summer is that it rains and then it doesn't rain for a number of days. And mosquitoes can go from the egg stage to flying adults in about a week this time of year. Ah. So if that water sits for a week, you've got flying adults. Okay. And West Nile, again, is just one of the diseases that uh, mosquitoes carry. It is. Um, in Massachusetts, we're looking for testing for Eastern Equine Encephalitis and West Nile virus. Okay. Um, but West Nile virus is at a high level now in Massachusetts, and that's what our mosquitoes tested positive for. Okay. So let's talk about preventing this, because it really starts with each and every one of us as residents to look at our backyards and the standing water that's in them. You said a tarp. I would have never thought of that. We have a tarp, tarp. over something in our backyard, and that probably is getting... It's a classic, because it'll have that one area that sort of dips down, and you don't right. really see it right away. At Bucket, you would see something right. like that. Um, the species of mosquitoes that are potential transmitters of West Nile virus all lay their eggs in man-made containers. So ah. for however they do it, they don't lay their eggs in swamps, they don't lay their eggs in abandoned old cranberry bogs, nothing like that. What they're looking for is the jar in your backyard, they lay their eggs in your gutter, they lay your eggs in that tarp and overturned trash can lids. You wouldn't believe what my crews have seen out there. Right. And it should be simple to control those mosquitoes in your yard. Those mm -hmm. mosquitoes don't fly very far. Those are the mosquitoes that you see at dusk and nighttime. Okay. So if you're seeing mosquitoes at dusk and nighttime, that's a clue. You've got something in your yard or maybe your neighbors have something in their yard. People always call because they're sure it's their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> something in their yard. Yes. Okay. So the best thing you can do is go around your yard and empty out those containers right. at least once a week. Make sure okay. that you're doing that. Uh, every time it rains is best. And then the gutters are the one that you don't see. Maybe there's a dip in your gutter. Maybe your gutters are clogged. Make sure the water's coming out of your gutters, too. Okay. And that would be a systematic way of just going through your yard after each rainstorm and saying, okay, I'm going to check these all the right. way from, you know, my deck right down to the patio and down by the mailbox. Exactly. Okay. That's what you can do. What our crews are doing um, is checking those road drains. The road drains, if you could see them underground or if you could see them... Sometimes you see them at the DPW sitting up on the ground. They're meant to hold a couple feet of water in them. The water runs off the road into the drains, and then it sits, because they want all of the stuff that's running off the road not to run directly into the water, right. the groundwater, but they want it to sit. Um, they're all little mosquito farms up and down the road. So my crews are going out treating those. Okay. Um, we treat about 15,000 catch basins in a summer, wow. and that's the one we get the most calls about, because I think it makes... People will question you, and it's good. People should question somebody putting something into a road drain, right. whether it's a packet or somebody spraying with a backpack into a road drain. What is that? What are you doing? It's, if it's my crew, it's bacteria to kill the mosquitoes that are developing in there. Okay. And we talk about, you know, some people want to leave their water for their birds or things like that. Um, is there things that you can treat your water with that would kill that for, you know, regular homeowners? First of all, if you just clean out your bird bath once a week, you should have no problem. Great. I know my bird bath, it's a mess <laughs> if I don't clean it out once a week. Yeah. Um, there are things that you can put in, say you have a water garden, because some right. people do sure. where they have standing water all of the time with no circulation. They actually sell the bacteria that we use. It's Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis, BTI. And if you look at the packaging for the mosquito dunks and things like that, it actually has that as an active ingredient. Um, I know that there's a product called Mosquito Dunks that look like little donuts. Okay. That's exactly the stuff that we use. You can put it in there and it'll slow release that bacteria and kill your mosquitoes. Okay. And that's for, you know, standing ponds that you would have as a water garden right, or right. something like that. Or you could put fish in it. They eat mosquitoes. They eat mos <laughs> There you go, right? <laughs> you can make it a fish pond instead. <laughs> you can make it a fish pond instead. What else do you want residents to know about, one, the diagnosis of, of West Nile virus being tested here on the Cape, and two, how to protect themselves. I think again that 14 samples coming back positive, five towns, I think six of those samples were in the town of Barnstable is unprecedented. That is a lot of West Nile virus in the mosquitoes. Okay. Um, I think people should take precautions. It's never good to be bitten by a mosquito, right? Mm -hmm. um, going around your yard helps you and your neighbors to not have mosquitoes. 
If you uh, want to be outside and there are mosquitoes biting you, you can use a repellent. Look at the label. Make sure it has an EPA registration number on the label because that means it's been tested effective and safe to use on your skin. Okay. Um, I know that there's a lot of talk about preventing tick bites here, and I know a lot of people are already educated on that. The same products that prevent ticks from biting you also repel mosquitoes, so any of those really? things. Would yeah, Promethean be one of those? Yes, yes. So, so you could treat your clothing right Definitely. before they bite you. Definitely. Before that, you don't want, mosquito bites are never good. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, and I would say the people shouldn't be overly concerned. They should just be vigilant. I think people should be vigilant in summertime with mosquitoes, you know, no matter what's going on. Right. West Nile virus should be assumed to be here, whether I'm saying it or whether the tests are showing it or not. This may be looking at levels. If people are interested in finding out exactly what's going on in their town, the State Department of Public Health has a website, mosquitoresults.com. It's easy to remember. It is. And you can go to that website and click on your town and see what's testing positive. It'll also show you, you know, the risk of transmission of the disease in your town. West Nile virus, um, when you look at the statistics, about 80% of the people who are exposed to the disease don't show symptoms. Another 20% show some sort of symptoms, ranging from mild to severe. Um, and it doesn't, in a way, that doesn't sound like a lot. But the people who are most likely to have severe symptoms from this are people who are, you know, 50, 60, older. And I think here on Cape Cod, that's a lot of our population. And so yeah. that definitely concerns me. They talk about it being a small percentage, but I think here we're a little more vulnerable to something like that. Right. So let's get rid of the standing water. Definitely. Right? That's, and that's the be best thing you can be vigilant do. and put protection on before you go out at dawn or dusk. You know, those runners out there. So exactly. um, that's tough. But really, standing water, folks, get rid of it in your yard. Definitely. Thank you so much. Oh, Great. thank you. Hey there, Barnstable Boomers. If you're working and haven't been able to get to the Barnstable Senior Center's outstanding fitness classes during the day, guess what? We're beginning evening hours in October with Tai Chi, Pilates, Chakra Yoga classes for adults. Got a creative side you want to explore? Arts and crafts workshops will be offered as well. Madeline Noonan, Executive Director, has all the exciting details. We're here at the Barnesville Senior Center and things are thriving everywhere. New programs, community conversations, but with me, Maddie Noonan, Executive Director, you have so many things going on. This is gonna be a, a good update. Mm -hmm. So brand new evening programs, mm -hmm. did we hear that correctly? You did. Evening programs. Yeah, we've been waiting a while and it's finally happening, so we couldn't be more excited. Great, so tell us a little bit. I know they're gonna start in October, but first off, give us an indication of why you started evening programming. That's a great question, Paula, and for quite a number of years here, what we've experienced with the changing generation of older adults is, and, and, and sort of the notion that people have, you know, that when you retired, you started going to the senior center and participating in activities, well, we know society has changed very much with people living longer, um, more active and productive lives. And one of the things that we've really learned um, through our experience here over the last couple of years is the whole idea of traditional retirement has gone out the window. You know, we see you go out to any of the stores around town and you'll see a lot of older adults that are still working beyond what we would have considered not too long ago as traditional retirement age when people hit 60 or 65. I mean, we know people that are still working that are in their 80s and even 90s. And sometimes it's coming from a place where it's an economic need that people have to work but also it's often times where people just want to have that sense of purpose um, that they're still engaged and still contributing to society um, but one of the things that we've seen on our end is that it means that we have people that tell us oftentimes that they'd love to participate in all of this you know the great variety of activities that we have here but because they're busy you know working. Um, we have many older adults that are caregiving for a loved one, um, a family member, that, that our traditional hours of operation 
just don't meet their needs. And one of the things that we really strive to be at the senior centre is responsive to the needs of our older um, population, and that really is our you know purpose. Um, and in order for us to continue um, to be responsive, we've got to change our ways of doing business. So the whole old models um, of a senior centre, you know, senior centres across the country, and there's somewhere between 11 and 15,000 senior centres across the United States, and we're all understanding that there's a new generation of older adults um, that we really have to evolve um, to continue to be relevant and to continue to meet their needs and to help them age well and improve and enrich their quality of life. So, you know, through the years, the last couple of years in particular, we've had a lot of people that have been coming. One person of note was somebody who worked um, in the school department throughout the school year and they were working um, in the cafeteria. Um, but when they were off during the summer, they were coming in and taking a lot of classes and activities here and, you know, said, this is great that I can come here during the summer, but what about the rest of the year when I'm working? You really need to be able to, you know, open in the evening. And we've heard that of, of sort of, you know, all different stories along the same theme. So we have been working, um, you know, with the town um, to, you know, advocate for the importance of that. Um, it was also identified in our needs assessment that we did with UMass Boston um, a couple of years ago that the changing demographic and the aging of the baby boomers was really driving this need for change. The good news is this year we got funding in the budget. Um, and I want to thank, you know, obviously our town manager, Mark Ells, our community services director, Lynn Poyant, um, and also our Barnstable Town Council for really being so understanding and responsive to that. Um, and I think that they really understand that in Barnstable we're very fortunate. We have a beautiful facility. We have a dedicated professional staff and we have this, you know, future oriented way of thinking that we want to be progressive and we want to set the example for other, um, you know, senior centres and councils on ageing to lead. And so there's a great sense of excitement and energy around this, not just on the part of the staff, but really, um, as we've been talking about this and the words getting out with our um, participants, it's it, people feel so invested in this facility and um, the fact that they know that we're trying to be more accessible um, and you know more attractive and appealing, it just gives us you know a great sense of potential for what we can become. Right, and this isn't just traditional uh, senior center activities either. It's not playing mahjong, but these are real classes and real world yeah. things that people can take back, either nutrition or exercise or uh, something new to learn. So what are some of the things that these evening classes are going to do? What are the workshops? What are they? Yeah, so we really want to expand. I mean, over the last couple of years, we've really intentionally looked at our programs, you know, our classes and activities and tried to diversify them, make them more, um, you know, more attractive to the new generation of older people. So we have such a wide array, something for all needs. When we talk about our exercise classes during the day, we have 20 plus um, different um, fitness programs. So what we really want to do is because, again, so many people cannot participate during the day. We want to expand those programs. So basically, in a sense, what you see here during the day is going to continue on beyond the traditional hours. We're going to be open on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings until 8 p.m. and on Thursday evenings until 6 p.m. And that's just to start. I mean, we're hoping as we build this incrementally that we'll be able to even go beyond those hours. And our goal is really to open four evenings a week until nine. Um, but it's going to be a variety. There's going to be a lot of enrichment, education opportunities, health and wellness opportunities. We want to have um, people come in and talk about health the aging and active living and why it's so important to stay actively engaged um, you know as people age and we're not just talking about what people think of as traditional um, senior center participant age which is really 75 and over we did a survey this year um, in the that went out in the census forms and we intentionally wanted to reach all of the households in, in the town because we wanted to get a sense of you know, what the senior center meant to our community and the types of programs and activities that people wanted to see us offer. And also um, you know, get a sense of you know, the, the, the types of, um, you know, that we wanted to go beyond what people, people who don't, don't identify necessarily the term senior, but that may be considered an older adult, what would bring them in the door. And what we learned from that survey, we got almost 2,000 responses, which really exceeded mm. our expectations. About 70% of the respondents said that they would be interested in participating in evening programs. 
and obviously it ran the gamut of people wanting a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, language classes, um, you know, um, quilting classes, cooking classes, entertainment, social events for some older people that really aren't able to get out in the evening, maybe because they don't drive, but still want to have that social connection with people. Um, you know, it's clubs and social events. So there's really no end. We want to be able to provide what the community wants. And, um, you know, so for us it's very exciting. We're, so to start off, we're doing um, a range. We've got some great dance classes we're offering. There's going to be a Latin salsa dance class. There's going to be ballroom dancing. We're going to have um, some exercise programs, some arts and crafts, jewelry making, um, kind of, you know, along the paint night theme. So I think there's a great right. sense when people come in and they get to do those kind of work with their hands. There's a great sense of accomplishment. And right. we're really hoping people um, of adults of any age can also come in. That was one of the things that we learned from the survey is there is a need for the town to offer programming, not just to the 50 plus population who, that we target our programs. I mean, I can say personally, I'm in my mid 40s. I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, but, you know, working full time, limited time for, you know, kind of doing those kind of fun things. I'd love, the staff and I joke all the time. We're not joking. We're actually serious. We'd love to take all the classes um, that happen in here during the day. And now there's a way for us to be able to participate in those programs. So we hope that, you know, the, the, the word will get out there that this is, you know, not just a, a place for older people, but that we can help, um, you know, um, people of all ages come in and really truly be a multi generational facility. So how can people get involved um, either by teaching a mm -hmm. workshop or a class or by signing up uh, to do something? Uh, what's going to be the mechanism that the word's going to get out? Yeah, so we're looking at a variety of ways to reach new audiences. Um, you know, obviously on our website, we're going to use our social media, we're going to use our, um, our magazine, our Compass magazine that's um, produced on a bi-monthly basis. But we really hope word of mouth. Word of mouth has really always been the best advertiser for us because when people come in here um, and they have a positive experience, which a majority of people do, uh, um, they'll go out and talk to other people, friends, and talk about, you know, you got to check out the senior center. They got a lot of great stuff going on. Um, and so, you know, we're hoping that that's really going to be the source of, of um, new, um, you know, participation um, for us. We're really excited to, you know, because again, we're exploring, this is a new venture for us exploring evening programming that, you know, if there's people maybe that are working full time, but have a hobby or something that they would love to share and, and you know, um, come and, and teach that, please give us a call. The best way to reach us is by just simply calling us at 508-862-4750. Um, we have an excellent activity coordinator, Susan Griffin, who is just really enthused about this, you know, and reaching out to new instructors. Um, but any, anybody who has a passion about anything, we want that, them to be able to share that. Um, and, you know, there's always room for us to, um, you know, kind of a lot of people, you know, we're a lot of busy people think there's no time to be creative and do all these things and we got to wait until we retire. Well, you don't. You can do it right now. We want everyone to join in on the fun and it's all contributing to our community being healthy and vibrant and, you know, we want, Barnstable is a very healthy, vibrant, as we know, community mm -hmm. um, with great programs and services and the more people that can benefit from that, the better for our overall you know, sense of well-being in town. It sounds so exciting. I hope you'll be participating. Well, you know, maybe <laughs> salsa or ballroom yeah. dancing, or maybe I can teach a video class. Why not? I think that would be wonderful because, again, you know, these are just opportunities for people to stay engaged and learn new skills. And, you know, I'm hoping I'll get over my two left feet syndrome <laughs> by taking a dance class at some point. I think my husband's actually very excited about the ballroom dance class, which I think a lot of people should be. You know, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to um, you know, bring all of this wonderful programming that um, that we know is kind of one of the best kept secrets in town. But now that we can um, venture into the evening, you know, the more the merrier, as we always say. Fantastic. So it starts in October. Yes. And it's going to run Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. Yeah. Varying hours to yeah. start um, to eight on the Tuesday, Wednesday, nine, uh, six on yeah, Thursday. Six on Thursday. Yeah. And we're Great. hoping, like I said, you know trying to be sort of mindful that it will take some time to get the word out. So we wanted to kind of start off just to give us some space to kind of fill the space, you know, that, that we're starting off. But then eventually, you know, over time, there'll be such a demand for this um, and such a need that we'll, you know, we'd love to think Monday to Thursday until 9 p.m. Sounds really good to us. And then maybe we can look at the weekends, you know. Um, but right. we're in the process, the, the funding that we got from the town allowed us to hire two part-time staff that would be um, in the building, um, somebody to work at 
the front desk to help register people and answer their questions, um, and also a custodial position. Um, and so that's really growth for us in that regard as well. I mean, obviously we have, um, you know, uh, a need for additional staffing as we kind of work into this new space, um, and we're in the process right now of hiring staff that will be, you know, well trained and will give everybody what we hear from people pretty much universally is that when people come in here they get a warm welcome. Um, we like to get to know everybody on a first name basis here um, and when we did our survey this year we asked the community uh, if they felt, if they agreed that the senior centre was a vital resource in town and it was an overwhelming. We had 98.5% of the respondents said yes we are and so we just want to maximize you know that um, that we're reaching out that more and more people in the community that you know will come in and, and join in on all of the great things that happen here that are really enriching people's lives. Fantastic. The Senior Center is thriving and new classes coming in the evenings in October. Thank you so much Maddie. You're welcome Paula. Thanks. Here's a look at the community calendar. Hopefully that rain will move out this afternoon because Barnstable Village Summer Stroll is tonight, August 22nd on Main Street from 4.30 to 6 p.m. After the Summer Stroll, head up to the community stage for the final Jailhouse Jam with Pam Pryor and Night Stage, 6 to 7.30. Here's a look at the meeting schedule. Oh, no meeting schedule today. All right, how about some comments, suggestions, accolades? Connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey. Thank you for watching Barnstable Today.